I picked up this shock for $75. This is a RockShox Monarch Plus RC3, and it usually retails between $450 and $500. The reason why I got it so cheap is because it was listed on eBay for parts and not working. I read the description and it said that it wasn't working because the guy couldn't set the sag. So let's get the shock mounted up and see what he's talking about. Well, now that the shock is mounted, it's holding air fine. Well, when I got on the bike, I felt that the shock was kind of locked out just for a second. And then I had just jumped on it and it went away. So I'm thinking that one of the air eyelets was just plugged up, but I'm still gonna go forward with the full on rebuild. So let's go ahead and get started. Have I ever rebuilt a shock before? Nope. Do I think that I can do this? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. RockShox has the manual on how to do a full on rebuild and it's 102 steps long. And I bought the rebuild kit for $45 and looking at all these O-rings, there's gotta be at least 70 to 100 O-rings on here. But it's a little intimidating, but I did a lot of Lego building as a kid. So I think I can follow a whole bunch of directions. Before I bought the shock, I messaged the guy and I asked him what he meant by the sag not working. And he basically said, yeah, I can't set the sag. If I knew more, I wouldn't be selling it for parts and not working. And I actually thought that sounded pretty strange and I didn't want to give away too much. So I quickly just bought the thing and I actually don't think anything's wrong with it. He said the damper body, AKA the stanchion, looks free and clear. But what I like most about this shock, it has more travel than the X-Fusion shock that comes stock on the Mythic. The X-Fusion O2R is 200 by 51, and this RockShox is 200 by 57 millimeters, which I think should give me about 140 millimeters of rear travel, which is a 10 millimeter increase. The reason why this video got delayed because I actually bought the wrong size shock at first. On the Vetus website, it says the Mythic has a Trunion mount. I don't know if I'm saying that right. So without really looking at it, I bought this used Fox DPX2 shock, which I was super pumped to use but this shock bolts directly into the body. And when the Vetus website says trunny unmount, they're actually talking about the linkage. And the Mythique has standard 22.2 millimeter mounting hardware or bushings, whatever you'd call it. So I hope that I can sell this Fox DPX2 for what I got it for, which was $200. Bike hack number one for this RockShox rebuild is that you don't actually need these crow feet sockets like the service manual recommends. I picked them up because it was my first time and I would have liked to tighten the things down to spec like the manual says, but some of the times you were actually tightening something that had a crush washer and it would max out and there's really no way that you could tighten it any further. When tightening the damper, it says to tighten it to 40 Newton meters and my torque wrench doesn't even go that tight. And I felt the O-ring compress and it was locked out. It wasn't going anywhere. There's really no way to tighten that to 40 Newton meters. I'd only recommend the crow's foot or just a regular wrench for the IFP reservoir.
Bike hack number two is you don't need all the oils and all the lubricants that RockShox recommends. The service manual says to get RockShox Dynamic Seal Grease, Suspension Specific Grease, and Maxima 15 Weight 50 Oil but I just use this slick oleum whenever it said to use all those specific greases. If you were to buy all those, that'd easily be $100. And sometimes you just need a little tiny dab. As for the oil in the air can, I am using slick oleum as a test. And I've seen other people on the internet that are using this and having great results. So I will be sure to let you know how the test results go. It took me quite some time, but of course I was filming. And it also was my first time, so I'd say it took me about six hours, but I'd say filming slows that down by at least 50%. If I could rate the difficulty of this job, I'd give it a saga scale of eight out of 10. So would I do this again? Well, yeah, you kind of have to. You're supposed to service your shock like this every 100 hours, and I'm sure that there's so many people out there that just don't do it, but now I have all the tools and I can do it myself from now on. I'll have an affiliate link for all the parts in this video in the description below, and if you click that link and buy something, it actually helps me out and gives me a commission so I can keep doing build videos like this. The RockShox rear shock is completely rebuilt, put about 200 PSI of air in it, checked the sag and it was perfectly at 30%. Right when I wrapped this up, it actually started raining. So I'm not gonna be able to ride for you guys at the end of this video like I usually do. But if you want a real-time ride review video this weekend, let me know in the comments down below. But I successfully took this shock, which was someone else's trash basically, a shock that retails for about $500, rebuilt it myself, and now I got a high quality shock but I can not say that this shock is super plush feeling and I really like how it has the pedal lockout and I can't wait to destroy some climbs on this bike. Ever since I bought this bike and people were hounding me for not buying the VRX model, it's been a goal of mine to make it actually better and cheaper than the VRX model. Before this video, to get the bike to this point, I spent $1,902. This RockShox Monarch Plus RC3 shock was $75, and the rebuild kit was $45. The damper oil was another $8, so that puts me at $2,030. When compared to the VRX, I do have the same fork as the VRX, and now I have the same amount of travel as the VRX, but I have a better shock. So this was the Mythic VR. I'm actually gonna call it the Mythic VRX Plus. I'd say that this bike is better and cheaper than the VRX. So the takeaway from this video is just to keep your eyes open for used parts. There are some great deals to be had on the internet. You can basically take someone else's trash, pick it up for super cheap, breathe some new life into it, and then before you know it, you have some dialed parts on your mountain bike. So if you like videos like this and you'd like to see more build videos in the future, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. And while you're down there, why don't you also like, and I'll see you on the next one.